So, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to welcome you here to the official launch in China of Shaping the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Uh, for those of you who think that title sounds familiar, well, it's also the title of a bestseller here in China too, The Fourth Industrial Revolution, written by Professor Kraus Schwab uh, to coincide with the launch of the annual meeting in Davos back in 2016. And this follow-up is really a deeper exploration of some of the themes that were initially uh, outlined in that book. So I'm delighted to welcome Professor Schwab here to join us for the session, and also to Mr. Zhang from CTEC, who's publishing uh, this book and who published the first, shape, uh, the first Fourth Industrial Revolution when that came out too. So without further ado, I'm going to turn to Professor Schwab and just ask him to share a little bit about how this uh, follow-up to the original came about. Sir. Thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Monk. Uh, I'm delighted to be here again with um, our friends from CITIC uh, who have published the first book. And it's for me a very special moment to unveil uh, the second book, which is called Shaping the Fourth Industrial Revolution. When I wrote the first book three years ago, the, and I coined actually, I created this um, uh, um, expression of the fourth industrial revolution, um, the idea was particularly to show the impact this revolution will have. It will have a disruptive but uh, significant impact on business models, on economies, and even on society. Now, if I look back three years ago, many of the technologies which I described at that time were still considered science fiction. And today, they have become, some in, to a large extent, uh, commonplace. Just think of self-driving cars, of blockchain, of artificial intelligence. Um, if I look at the paper uh, this morning, at the papers, um, there are so many articles now about the fourth industrial revolution. And I may mention the World Economic Forum yesterday just published a report looking at the impact of the fourth industrial revolution on jobs. It's a very important report. I think it's available for the media, um, showing that we can we don't have to be pessimistic, providing, providing we take the necessary measures for reskilling and upskilling of our labor force now and we don't wait for too long. Now, why do they write a second book? The fourth industrial revolution is not just happening. The fourth revolution has also the potential to address and solve many issues for example, environmental issues and so on, it can be very beneficial for humankind. But the fourth industrial revolution has also some risks. We don't want to become the slaves of robots, of uh, algorithms. No, we want to make sure that this revolution serves huma huma humanity. And in order to do so, we have to shape the policies around the fourth industrial revolution. We cannot wait until those effects of the fourth industrial revolution um, develop and unfold uh, in an uncontrolled way. We need to create frameworks. We also create, we have to create standards in order to make sure that we still can cooperate on a global uh, level in using those um, uh, technologies. So the whole book is about how can we make sure that we work together on a global level and create the necessary policies to make the fourth re industrial revolution really beneficial for all people uh, on Earth. So that's the purpose and um, you will find all the details in the book. Fantastic. And <clears throat> before just taking some questions, I can just ask Mr. Zhang briefly uh, what, you know, about your experience publishing the book 
and uh, how successful the initial publication was here in China. Uh, yes, we are very honored to be able to publish this book. Um, the f previous one was also published by us. It was in 2016 and was launched during the Web Forum. And it was the bestseller of CITIC. Um, the, so the sales was 150,000 copies, and it had a huge effect on the society. And this new book, I think it's more detailed and, more in and, and it covers more areas. And it very much concerns a new society that is transforming. Thank you. See out. Sorry, I'm going to have to shave my eyes slightly uh, for questions. And can I ask when you have a question if you could tell us from where you are and, and give us your name? That would be fantastic. So, lady there first, and then question there. We've got a microphone for you coming up. Perfect. Hello, uh, I'm a reporter with CGTN China Global TV Network, and my question is about the U current U.S.-China trade friction. Uh, I wonder, what's your assessment of the current uh, U.S.-China trade dispute, particularly on the proposed uh, uh, extra tariff on the on Chinese goods with a value at, with value at 200 billion U.S. dollars, and uh, U.S. President Donald Trump complains about China's intellectual property protection and uh, its balance and trade imbalance with China. So, do you think this is the right approach to reach these goals? Thank you. That's a great question, and we have the lady there as well on the front row. Thank you, I'm with China Daily. My question is about the Chinese economic development. How do you comment about the past 40 years um, reform and the opening up strategy uh, in China? And what's your outlook of the future's development based on this kind of strategy? Thank you. Thank you. I will take the second question first. Uh, the World Economic Forum has been associated with China since the beginning of its reform and opening up policy. I came to China the first time and we had our first event in 1979. So we are celebrating 40 years of cooperation. I have witnessed the great uh, ascension of China. Uh, it has become the number two and soon it will be the number one economic power uh, in the world. It's just uh, mind-boggling uh, what has been achieved in the last 40 years. And I'm sure, particularly with its focus on the fourth industrial revolution, uh, China will continue its growth, but it will be more growth of a qualitative nature, fortunately, and not just quantitative growth because China has now achieved a level of development uh, which guarantees to large parts of the population uh, the physical existence. So the key will be quality of life and the fourth industrial revolution which is highly recognized by China and its authorities will certainly help to do so. Now, as far as the first question is concerned, um, of course, globalization has benefited the world tremendously uh, in the last uh, decades, and particularly in the last 40 years. Um, the context has changed. Today, a global trade is not only an exchange of physical goods. Uh, we have today, uh, we have e-commerce, uh, we have the issue which uh, you mentioned of intellectual property. We have the issue investments and I could go on and on. So economic uh, exchange has become much more difficult. Now we have to make everything to keep a multilateral and open system. 
and trade wars are certainly uh, at the end a lose-lose and not a win-win situation. Uh, so I hope that um, uh, everybody will recognize that uh, maintaining an open multilateral system is in the interest not of every individual country, but of the world as a whole. Thank you. <clears throat> Lady there. Thank you. Thank you. I'm with uh, 21st Century Business Herald. If I remember it correctly, I think the annual meeting of the new champions 2016 also focused on the fourth industrial revolution uh, as the theme of the meeting. So why two years later we like uh, chose this topic as the theme of the meeting again? And in the last two years, what opportunities and uh, challenges have you sensed worldwide uh, for like all countries in embracing the fourth uh, industrial revolution? Thank you. I can, I can imagine that even in the coming years, directly or indirectly, we still will uh, deal with the fourth industrial revolution. We should not forget it's a major transformation force of the world at the present time. So it's a second transformation force, which is the transition from a unipolar to a multipolar world, and I should say from a uniconceptual to a much more multiconceptual world. How do we have a differentiation with 2016? 2016, we looked particularly at the technological aspects, and we tried to explain what the fourth industrial revolution is. For example, what can we expect from artificial intelligence? How will blockchain unfold? Now, we are much more in, in, engaged in the realization of the fourth industrial revolution. And if you look at the theme this year, uh, it's mainly uh, devoted to the, and, and the sessions to a large extent, are devoted to the impact of the fourth industrial revolution uh, on society. Thank you. We have a lady at the front and a gentleman further back. Uh, I'm, from, I'm from Zhejiang Daily. Uh, I want to ask, uh, uh, will, uh, could you can tell me some new information about uh, uh, the sec, uh, third book, uh, if you plan to uh, write the third book? I mean, um, I want to know uh, what's uh, did you focus on something? Uh, thank you. Thank you. And the gentleman just there. My name is Frédéric Lodier from CNN Money, Switzerland. Uh, I'd like to hear you more on how uh, you can make, uh, we can make the fourth industrial revolution serve humanity, as, uh, as you put it. Uh, this Populist parties rising uh, across the globe. Many people are scared of losing their jobs because, uh, as you said, that this uh, revolution is disruptive. Uh, so it creates a lot of uncertainty. So how can we? Can you give us more insights on how can we master that uh, peacefully? I assume that uh, transformation. I could give you now, uh, since I have written the book, a long lecture. But let me just give you some examples. Uh, the World Economic Forum will have next week a, a social um, impact summit uh, in uh, New York um, uh, together with the United Nations uh, General Assembly uh, week. And here we have numerous examples of how uh, it's the new technologies can accelerate uh, the implementation and the realization of the SDGs. Again, the World Economic Forum just published this week a report on how blockchain uh, can be helpful. And I think we, we defined 50 or 60 different, yeah, how 50 many? Dif 50 different ways. Yeah, 50 different ways how blockchain can help in the realization of the Sustainable Development Goals. This is one aspect. The second aspect is, what does the fourth industrial revolution actually mean? It means connectivity. And it will allow us, those 
parts of countries or those parts of population which feel left out to connect. For example, just think of the capability of a combination of distributed energy generation in Africa with solar panels and not using any more big infrastructures uh, combined with uh, 5G. Uh, it provides everybody possibly with the access to education, to knowledge, to health uh, services. A third point, the fourth industrial revolution uh, can be much faster adapted compared to the previous institutions which require in order to be uh, utilized a large infrastructure, just think of the creation of a railway system and so on. Um, so um, it can help to leapfrog, uh, it can help uh, at the moment emerging countries, underdeveloped countries to leapfrog. Those are just three um, concrete examples how uh, this technology can help um, the, uh, let's say, those who feel um, left behind or feel disenchanted. Um, but we have to make also sure, and that's another answer to your question, that we create the necessary skills to ensure that um, we have the talents which are needed in the fourth industrial revolution. Because the fourth industrial revolution will require different skills, different tra talents to what is now required. So the educational systems, the professional training systems have to be adapted to the needs of the fourth industrial revolution. And those countries which do it fast and which foresee the need to do so will be the winners. Now, coming to your question, um, I don't know whether you, were, you could read my mind. Um, of course, I'm um, very um, interested of how the fourth industrial revolution will impact on the global infrastructure. Um, if we look at uh, the global, uh, at global cooperation today, um, of course, uh, we have institutions, we have mechanisms to deal with the traditional issues. Maybe sometimes not in perfect ways and sometimes even in conflictual ways. But if we look at um, the policies which are needed here, global policies to create standards for, um, uh, for the new technologies, to create ethical principles, for example, for artificial intelligence, uh, to create a cyberspace which is resilient and robust, um, to create solutions for many global problems like the pollution of our oceans by plastics. And I could go on and on. So we have many issues which require global cooperation and which, for which we do not have yet the necessary mechanism and institutions. And the new book, and I, you are the first to hear about it, will uh, have the title Globalization 4.0, because in order to deal with the issues of the fourth industrial revolution, we need a revitalized and to a certain extent reshaped global cooperation system. There you go. That really is hot off the press. Um, lady there. From the China Economic Paper, from the China Economic Development website, and for this fourth industrial revolution, China is trying to leap ahead. China is uh, trying to convergence for the industrialization and the informationalization. And uh, for China's effort for this uh, industrial uh, revolution 4.0, what is the biggest challenge? Can you break them down into different areas? Could you tell us how to solve these challenges? Thank you. 
We have to be aware that um, the battle on for leadership in the fourth industrial revolution is also, I would say, heating up uh, the trade discussions at the present moment. It's not just an issue about trade and about exports and imports, it's also a discussion of who will lead the fourth industrial revolution. Because um, the fourth industrial revolution is characterized by the fact that who moves fast and who moves first gets a very special competitive advantage for the future. So what is the, let's say, best way for China to move ahead? I think it's uh, to mobilize its entrepreneurial, its innovative forces. And um, we have here at this annual meeting, and that's very special, we have not only invited the large companies, which are the members and partners of the World Economic Forum, we have invited also the startups. And I'm very glad to say that there are 400 startups present here. They are the drivers of the fourth industrial revolution. And out of those 400, are 200 are um, uh, Chinese uh, companies or Chinese entrepreneurs. So creating the necessary innovative and entrepreneurial infrastructure, I think, is the key short term and long term it's creating the necessary educational systems. We're drawing near to the end of our time. I think we've got time for one more question. Gentleman at the front. I'm from the uh, question about AI from the Economist uh, Daily, and uh, AI can do innovation, but it uh, costs a lot of jobs. And uh, for the creating jobs and the costing jobs, what do you say? And anything you want to say for the China young people? I'm, I'm convinced if you look at the uh, previous industrial revolutions, uh, for example, the transition from, from agriculture to industry and the transition from industry to service, always jobs were destroyed. Economies speak of creative destruction. Um, and this will also be the case this time. But what is different is that the time which is available for this transition um, will be much shorter than in the previous revolutions. So mid-term and long-term, I'm optimistic that we can uh, replace the lost jobs by new jobs. And I recommend you very much to read our study which we just published, which gives a much more academic and scientific uh, background uh, to the answer uh, to your question um, in a very detailed form. Um, short term, I think those countries which particularly, and that's my message to the young generation, uh, it is be as entrepreneurial as possible. So countries, with a very entrepreneurial, innovation-driven um, uh, infrastructure, uh, they will be winners uh, in the age of the fourth industrial revolution. Thanks, everyone, for your questions. Thanks for joining us for this book launch. There are copies of the book available at the back, should you wish to uh, pick one up. And uh, look forward to seeing you at our next uh, press event later this afternoon. Thank you.